Bubbles are very beautiful things. They have all the colours of the rainbow in them. And so do oil films on puddles. And this sort of stuff that you buy to stick on your bicycle or your car reflects the colours of the rainbow too. As do precious opals, like these. And all of them reflect these rainbow colours for the same sort of reason. They all depend on white light. You see, if you take a beam of white light, hidden inside that are all the colours of the rainbow. A red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet. When you mix them all up, you get white light. But there's a way of unmixing them too. What about the wiggly stuff? Well, that depends on the wavelength of light. You see, if you take a skipping rope or any sort of cord like this, and you jiggle one end while the other's tied, you'll notice that it gets beats in it, hills and valleys, and they tend to stay in much the same sort of place. It goes up and down and up and down. That really is the wavelength of a particular rope that you've got, and light travels in similar sorts of ways, and each colour has its own wavelength. The wavelength is really the distance from the top of one hill to the top of the next. And you notice it's a big distance for red, it's a long wavelength, it's a short distance for blue and purple, and it's a medium distance for green. So when you get those wavelengths coming out, you get that particular kind of colour. Well, all of these things that we've seen produce colours in that kind of way. Let's say that's a bubble film, the side of a bubble film. When light comes through that, white light anyway, it reflects first from one side, the outer side of the film, and then from the inner side. But because the distance of the film, distance across it, is really only the same distance as the wavelength of the colours, that's what you get back. If it's a thin film, you get purple. If it's thick, you'll get red. The same with an oil film. It's only about as thick as the wavelength is the color of the colours. This stuff has very tiny lines scratched in the mirror surface, and in fact, the distance between the lines is about the distance of the wavelength of the colours that you see bouncing back. What about opal? Same sort of thing. You see, opal is really made up of little silicon spheres. They're rather like glass, a bit like tiny, tiny marbles. But if you have all of these of different sizes, like the ones in my hand, and cram them together, you'll notice that they go in in no particular order. It's just a, a mash of silicon spheres. And they don't bounce back light in any particular way. And that will give you opal, but it's opal without colour. It's potch or, or rough opal. But if those spheres are all the same size as they are in this model here, you'll notice that they pack into regular layers. There's one, two, three, four, five, etc. And lo and behold, the distance between them in precious opal is about the distance of the wavelength of light. So if they're big spheres, you'll get red light coming out. Little spheres, you'll get purple. And medium-sized spheres will give you rock like this, full of greens. Well, that's not all you have in opal. You also have water sitting inside the structure. It's not loose like this, otherwise it would flow out of the rock, but it is bound in there. And in precious opal, you've got about three or 10, somewhere between three and 10% of water. Well, some people think opal is an unlucky stone. It's not really true, but no one quite knows the origin. It may be because some opals tend to crack. And this is one of the reasons you look at any opal you buy very carefully. See, both of those look like very good opals. Indeed they are. One is better than the other. If you hold this one up to the light, you'll see that inside it are some little whitish specks. They're known as cottons. And they're organic and they can grow. If you magnify them a lot, they'd look like this, little black lines throughout the opal. And if they grow, they can split the opal and make it crack or break. So if you buy an opal, a precious opal like this that you can see through, hold it to the light, and if it's like this one, completely free of any cottons, it's not going to be an opal that cracks. So opal's not unlucky. It's like any gemstone. You can get good ones and bad ones. But nothing has the particular beautiful rainbow appeal of opal.